Hi, I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through SOLIDWORKS 2024 introduction. So this is actually exercise one, which is covered in my course. That's a college course that I teach. And we're going to step through how to build the part that you see in front of you. And at the same time, we're going to take a look at some of the functions and as well as the what I call the heart of SOLIDWORKS, which is the options. And then we'll also take a look at how to add some colors and, and rendering and such. So let's begin. First of all, the goal here of this part is to learn how to make some basic extrusions and add dimensions like you see here. Like we're going to make a th three by five uh, rectangle and extrude it a half inch deep. Then we're going to go ahead and create another one layered on top of that, about a half inch thick, one and a half inches high, same width. We're going to drill a hole in here, or I should say cut a hole, and it's going to be one inch off of the top edge, one inch off the left edge, and it'll be three quarters of an inch. We're going to put some fillets in. That's what you see here, those radiuses, and those are going to be one inch each. And then we're going to see how to put chamfers in. That's the blue edge that you see here. That's just an angle. It'll be a 45 degree by 0.125. And the reason I'm using inches is because I am here in the United States and that's, uh, we do use metric quite a bit more now than we used to, but uh, many of my students know what an inch is versus centimeters, not all the time. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. So with SOLIDWORKS, when you get started, first of all, um, let's just look at the interface. You have the ribbon up at the top here. You have the pull-down menus, and this could be tacked in if you like it or not. And I like it because sometimes it's easy just to go ahead and give instructions where something's located versus explaining an icon. But uh, you have new and as well as undo and print and so on and so forth. This is the feature manager design tree. This contains all of the history of everything you're going to do. Like, for example, it, it's a chronological history. So the very first thing is that base, or the, uh, that boss extrude that we're going to create. And you see every subsequent one is there as well. You could also use this as a rollback bar. It's like a little time machine. You could see from the very start what we began with and how it progressed to get where we are and it allows you to add and edit features in between there. The planes are your paper. So we have a front, top and right plane that SOLIDWORKS always starts off with. And those are essentially, like I said, they're your paper, they're infinite. Basically you could sketch, you don't have to be confined to the rectangle that you see there. That's just uh, to give you a, an idea of spatially where you are, where it is. Okay, and let's get started. First of all, you could go to File, New, or Control N, or you could go to this little piece of paper up here. Either one is fine. And you'll see there's Parts, Assemblies, and Drawings. In this course, we're going to go ahead, it's CAD 120, and we're going to go ahead and cover Parts, Assemblies, and Drawings. The first four weeks are just Parts. Uh, fifth week is Assemblies, and the sixth week is going to be Drawings. And then you get to make a midterm using all three of those. And then from there on, we get to some more advanced techniques. So just make sure you have parts selected and hit OK. There is an advanced option, by the way, and you see parts, then we join and we can make templates. And I have a separate video for that. I don't want to teach anyone how to make a template the first day, but um, you can make metric or English templates and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit that. Now, I think I have like some custom templates on. So hit this little arrow to the lower right and make sure you select inch pound second. All right, now there is another area down there. If you click on that, there's edit document units. You could either click on that or you could go up to the gear here and that's the options. Now this is what I referred to or actually someone else referred to it years ago as the hardest all works. I really like that because basically it has almost everything that you would need to be able to change or want to change. And it's divided into two tabs. You have system options and document properties. Uh, first of all, the document properties only affects the current document that we have up. So the one that we just brought up, anything we change inside here in these lists will be affected. System options are global settings. Whatever you change in there is going to affect every single thing from then on out. And you could always go back, you could reset it. If you ever set something up or someone else sits down at your system, you're not sure what they set, hit that reset button down there and hit OK. And that a lot of times clears that up if there's something that you did not want. But let's go to document properties. You'll see it's set to ISO, which is the international standard. You'll see that there's the GO standard, the, the British standard. Let's go with the ANSI. And 
That's the American National Standard. And then also, let's just go to units, and I'd like to show you something in units here. You'll see that you could have dual dimensions if you like. Also, the length in units, we could set it to three decimal places to give us ourselves higher precision. And you could go up to eight decimal places, as you can see there. So very high precision capabilities. And when you're done, go ahead and hit OK here at the bottom. And we will go back to that over the next course of the semester here. All right. Now, taking a look on the left here, you'll see this is um, the feature manager design tree, as I mentioned before, in your planes. Before we do that, notice there's materials. Go ahead and right click on materials. And by the way, if I just say click, I'm referring to the left mouse button. I very rarely have to say left mouse button. I'll just say click. But the right mouse button is used to activate context sensitive menus, just like you see here. And so I will always be sure to say it twice. I'll say the right mouse button, right, just so you don't make an accident. I have an error. Okay, go and go to edit material. But you'll notice below there you have all these uh, common materials, or maybe not so common, but you can select those easily, or else you could go to the material library, which gives you a, a rather extensive library of different materials. And here we can see the steel, like 1023. Like if you clicked on that, you would be able to go over here and you could set it to megapascals or IPS, and you could get like the yield strength, tinsel strength, and so on and so forth. Um, let's go ahead and scroll down and let's go to aluminum alloys and hit the little arrow to the left of that and it pulls down a bunch of different aluminums and you'll see uh, there's a whole selection. I'm going to go with the 1060 alloy and what's nice about this, all that data can be applied. Go ahead and hit apply and then hit close to your model and then later on we could find out how much the part weighs when it's done so we could figure out how much material we have to order. We could also run analysis with uh, a finite element analysis as well as other tools in there and that directly carries over to that. Okay, so from here on let's go and the, when, you, when you want to start off, and by the way you don't have to select the material every time. I just did that. The SOLIDWORKS doesn't make you do that. Let's go to the front plane. So click on the front plane and notice you have front, top, and right. And essentially when you are designing something, you like, let's say we take our cell phone, uh, that that would be considered maybe the front, this would be considered the top, and this is the right. So essentially with that knowledge in hand, you could take one of those views and say, okay, I want to start from the right. And you could click on the right plane, or maybe you want to start from the front view and you would draw it on the front. Deep down, it really doesn't matter too much. As long as you understand your space or have spatial awareness inside 3D, you can manipulate that. But it's not easy. Once you pick a plane, it's not always the easiest to go back. But there are tricks and things like that to do it, but you usually don't need to. All right, another thing you have, by the way, before I go any further, is the origin. The origin can't be moved inside SOLIDWORKS, uh, nor can it be deleted. It's your anchor point, and you do I would recommend using that as your anchor point for your models because otherwise they just are floating in space. So um, it's not a bad thing to have. So let's go ahead and select the front plane. Now, when you click on the front plane, you'll see it highlight in the view screen. And if I move my pointer barely, uh, you'll get this little toolbar. Actually, if you don't move it, I should say. And this is a, a quick launch toolbar and enables you to select things very easily and quickly. And you can use that sketch right there to start your sketch. Otherwise, if you move your pointer away, you'll see it will evaporate. So you have to go to the Sketch tab at that point, or click on Front Plane again, and you'll see Sketch. Now, if you hit the little arrow on the Sketch tab underneath Sketch, you'll see that there's 3D Sketch, Sketch, and 3D Sketch on Plane. We are primarily, until the seventh Exercise 7, we will only be using 2D Sketch Planes, which is just Sketch. So don't use the 3D Sketch. That's great for piping, for structural steel, and tubing and things like that, but it's not practical for what we're doing today. So let's go to sketch. All right, so our goal is to create that rectangle that we could extrude and add thickness to. So you'll see over here on the left, there's all these tools to choose from, your typical tools you'd see anywhere. Hit the little arrow to the right of corner rectangle. That's where we're gonna start. And you can see there's a, an array of tools to choose from inside that. But let's go with corner rectangle. Now. On the left here, you still have those tools and you can change them. There's also parameters, which parameters are okay for getting you close to the marker, but don't rely on those 
for a production part, i.e. when um, I'll show you in a second here why. Go ahead and move your pointer, which now turns into a pencil, to the origin. Now that origin, you'll see the Y is vertical, the X is to the right. You could also see that little indicator in the lower left corner too for Y and X. We don't worry too much about Y and X inside SOLIDWORKS. The plane system that it's based on is actually, um, which is used in many CAD systems these days, is ac actually eliminates the need to have to really rely on X and Y positioning. Um, anyhow, let's go ahead and click. And when I say click, remember it's the left mouse button one time. Release it. The mouse button and now move your pointer to the upper right and you'll get some feedback to the right of your pointer x and y position and i was just saying oh you don't really use it in this case it's get, just giving you the parameters of the box and you could utilize that to get you kind of close to the marker but remember solidworks was actually designed with the idea of conceptualization too because you don't always know the parameters initially when you come up with the design later on you could go back and dimension it so it gives you that flexibility to do that. Just move this to the upper right where X is in the twos and Y is maybe in the three to fours and go ahead and click and that should complete the rectangle. Now you'll see these little green boxes. Those little green boxes actually are one of two types of constraints. You have dimensional constraints which we're going to see just in a second here and then there's uh, these uh, relational constraints, which are common elements of geometry, like parallelism, concentricity, coincidence, tangency, things like that. Um, but anyhow, when we could delete those, if I hit escape on the keyboard, go ahead and hit escape on your keyboard in the upper left. That will get you typically out of most tools, not all, but like your sketch tools, they'll usually get you out of the particular tool. Now you'll notice these are flexible sketches. Go ahead and click on this dot and hold the mouse button down and move your mouse left and right up and down. You'll see it's a very flexible sketch. However, if you move this one down here, you can't, cannot be, cannot drag the selected item is fixed because it's anchored. And that's a good thing. Actually, you want to what they call fully define the geometry before it goes into production. Because for conceptualization, conceptualization is fine. But notice if I click on this line or click on the point, everything stays vertical with that line. That's because of this constraint. If I click on that, and, and I don't, you don't need to do this part, I'm just going to show you. If, and I hit delete on my keyboard, it disappears. Now if I move this, I could put it in an angle if that was your desired choice. But I want to bring that back. There's the undo button up here. I could just hit undo and a second time until the green square reappears. Now, we're eventually gonna turn these off. I'm gonna leave them on just for the first couple minutes and hopefully I'll remember to turn them off later on because we don't really need them all the time. In fact, actually, we could hide them right now. Just go to view and go to hide show. And if there's something you wanna see or something you don't wanna see, or sometimes there's things that you're like, well, I should be seeing like my weld beads and they're not on by default. They're not on, there they are. Uh, if you, well, beads is more advanced. We're going to get to that like into the second class. But anyhow, so from here, you'll find sketch relations. You could turn that off. Those disappear. They're not gone. If you still click, they'll appear. So if you need to, you could have access to them if you like. But um, there we go. OK, let's go to Smart Dimension. Hit the little arrow under it first, though, and you'll see there's multiple ways to dimension. There's ordinates. There's chain dimensions, symmetric, linear so on and so forth. But let's just go with smart dimension. Hover your pointer over the line you want to dimension. So we want to dimension this bottom line here. So go ahead and click. Now you can click the two points. That's just extra work for you though. One click on a line does it. So just move your pointer down and not everyone here is used to making drawings. So just a little hint, if, if you can center your dimensions, just so it's easy to read, because if you do this, it looks sloppy. So just get them centered click and go ahead and type in three. Do, this is one thing not to do, by the way. Click in here and then 3.000. You don't have to do that. Okay, you can, um, but I hit green check and it worked. Here's the better way. And this, the reason I share this with you, if any of you are going into this as a career and you get tested by a manager, because that's how some places will. They'll sit you down. Okay, let's see what you can do. Draw me a rectangle. Extrude it. Dimension it so-and-so. Well, if you do this and center it again over here, click. When that's all glowing blue like that, you could just go ahead and hit 
five. Done. As long as you know it's 0 0.000, it's going to add those automatically. You can hit the green check mark or enter either way. So that's a really nice thing when you're, if you're ever being tested, it just looks, makes you look professional and as though you've been using it for a while. All right, let's now go into the 3D world. By the way, um, F on your keyboard is for fit, so zoom to fit. So go ahead and click on that. You'll see it will center it in the screen. All right, go to features, which is the 3D tab, really. This is all, these are the 3D tools. Notice a lot of them are grayed out. It's called the Object Action Paradigm Solver, which doesn't give you um, tools that you can't use yet. So just go to Basic Extrude. only gives you what you can use with the elements that you have up on the screen. So from here, let's see. On the left now, it's asking us to go, oh, blind just means a, a specific uh, a depth, and we get to put in the parameters. So like right over here, you could type in 0.5 over that. And hit Enter once to get a preview update. Hit enter twice to have it apply. Now you can actually, those of you who are doing conceptual work, you can click on this and it gives you a ruler and drag that arrow. So you have that ability too. Um, and just, it's not always the easiest to snap, although actually snapping is working really well there. So for 0.5 especially, but if it's something more detailed, you probably want to type in the explicit value on the left. Go ahead and hit the green check mark now. And so now we have a block. You'll notice the light blue dotted lines. That just means it's still in a selected state. To get rid of that, you could click anywhere on the screen off of the part or hit escape on your keyboard, goes away. So it just means that it was like still in a selected mode. All right, so let's take a look at how to manipulate this and rotate it. First of all, um, with the tools up here, they're zoom to fit. We did that with the F key, that's the fast key. There's zoom to area. If you click and you click on this and drag it to that area or drag an envelope around that area, it will zoom up. If you hit F again on your keyboard, it will go back. Or you could go over here to previous view and that will go back to that same view. There's also a section view. If you click on this, it enables you to select and rotate the plane and adjust it and give you a section view. Well, um, if you hit the green check mark and you'll see it stays in that mode, you can actually work in this mode, but be aware that those things that aren't in the view screen, you can't really work on. So, but it is nice to turn it off. Just turn it off. Go up here to section view and disable it. All right. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and skip dynamic annotations for right now, but go to view annotations. I'm sorry, a uh, view orientation. And you'll see here you have all the different view orientations front, top, right. You could click on them and it will go to those states. And there's even isometric, trimetric, and dimetric. So let's go with isometric. All right. Now, over here to the right of that, there's display style. You might want to see the edges turned off, shaded. Or you want to see hidden lines removed or hidden lines visible. And you could still rotate and do all those things. But let's go with hidden or shade with edges. All right, now this is that same filter that I was showing you earlier under view. So if you wanna hide certain things, do that. And then we have um, edit appearance, which we're not gonna do just yet. But over here you have different types of displays like plain white or urban background. And if you rotate, you get that. All right, I'm gonna go back to three point faded. I think that did a pretty decent job. Some of you might not have the reflections that you have down there or these. Um, it's typically, a, it used to be you needed a professional graphics card like a NVIDIA Quadro or a T-Series. And that's what I actually have. Um, or you needed a, a, a graphics card. Like for example, here we have a Radeon, a Radeon W6400 graphics card. And these are budget graphics cards. They're in the range of about $200 and $250 on eBay. Well, you might be able to find cheaper. They might be more expensive in some certain places. So anyhow, that's uh, those are professional cards. A non-professional card needs something like this, where it's, this is this almost identical chipset. It's actually the RX 6400 from AMD. Uh, and that one, I tested it, and it doesn't work. Uh, what you get 
but you don't get those shadows, it turns off this real view graphics. And this is what you'll get. All right. And some of the NVIDIA gaming cards now, actually I had a 1030 I just tested and it had the graphics in it. So um, it just depends. It used to be professional graphics would only have it, but it seems as though it's moving into the mainstream graphics too. And there is a, there's a hack out there. You could Google it, go to YouTube and find out how to do it. You have to change the configuration file. I don't like going into, uh, I should say regedit. Um, and I don't like to go in there because it caused some damage. So I don't recommend it. But if you want, look it up. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and build on to this. Uh, or actually, we're not done yet. I want to show you how to rotate. Now with your mouse, if you hover your mouse over the center here and you scroll the wheel on it, it zooms in and out. And if you hover your mouse in a corner and keep it, in that corner and scroll towards it, it will zoom up to that. Okay, so you could actually move and scroll with that. That's really nice. Now get it recentered, and you could a quick one is spacebar will get you here, and you could go to isometric or remember there's the tools up here which do the same thing. Okay, now to rotate that same wheel instead of rolling or scrolling it, push it down like it's actually a button and hold it. Move your mouse left and right, up and down, and that's dynamic rotation. Now hit your arrow keys on your keyboard, the right, left, up and down. That rotates in 15 degree increments. If you hold control in the arrow keys, it pans. If you hold alt in the arrow keys, it rotates clockwise and counterclockwise. Shift rotates in 90 degree increments. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar again and go right back here to isometric. Okay, let's continue. Select this face. Now, as I told you earlier, last time we used the front plane as our paper, but once you have a solid model and it has flat faces on it, you can actually sketch on any flat surface. So that's what we're gonna do here. Go ahead and select this face and find sketch right here. Now, if you didn't, if this disappears, remember you could always go up here to sketch and sketch. Either one is fine. And it should reorient you normal to the, your screen. Okay, now again, we're gonna use the corner rectangle, but note there's lines, circles, arcs, and all those fun things. We will cover those like in the labs coming shortly after this exercise. But go to corner rectangle again, hover in the lower left corner, and you'll see the orange dot. That's an indicator that's actually locking into that and creating an automatic relationship. Now over here, we move to the right, and you'll see that uh, you'll get a little yellow box to the right or pointer. That's an indicator that it's creating a relationship of coincidence to that edge. So it will match up with the edge. Now, if you go even higher, you'll find the midpoint. Uh, we don't want that for this one, but it is a nice tool. So just be aware of, but anyway, bring it down a little bit around um, X should be three and Y should be one and a half ish. So 1.5 ish. Okay. So click, and then now you could hit, um, smart dimension. Go over here to the right and click on this line. If you can't get that line, go ahead and select the points or the two lines here and here. But either way, if you click here, this is the dimension we're looking to get, just a dimension for the height of that. So move it over, center it, click, and make that 1.5 and hit the green check mark. Now we could go to features, extrude boss base, and it remembers our setting of 0.5 from last time. So we'll just stick with that. So hit the green check, but we could change it if we wanted. And remember to get rid of that. Just click anywhere on the screen, that blue geometry. Okay, we're now going to learn. You've learned how to make ske basic sketches with the rectangle tool. Now we're going to drill a hole. And actually, it's really called a cut extrude. So we're going to put that right about there. I want you to just click anywhere on this surface because that's the surface we want to cut and we're going to sketch on it. So click on that and then go to sketch and now go over here to circle and hover your pointer in this quadrant in the upper left about where my pointer is right now. Click and move out a circle and like 0.3 or 0.4 is pretty good. You could click again. And by the way, some of you might be familiar with Inventor where, and also another product called Creo where it automatically adds dimensions. You have that function in the tools options as well. If I remember, I'll try and show it to you, but um, otherwise you can find it up here. And also there's a search up here. Sometimes you can 
plug in, if you know the name of something, type it in and it will, it does a fabulous job of taking you right to the icon. All right, go to Smart Dimension, click on the outside of the circle and move your pointer up here and we'll click to release the dimension and type in 0.75, hit enter. Now you could click on the center point and this left edge and then move the dimension up here. Now if there's not enough room, you could zoom out a little bit with the wheel and I'm going to just drop it right there. That's going to be one enter. Now you can even click on the outside of the circle and then the top edge and then over here, move the dimension and one, it automatically goes to the center. Um, and some other releases, sometimes it will pick up on a quadrant. So sometimes you might want to just escape out of there and pick the center point until you get more advanced where the tools are to change that. But anyhow, we're now located. We've located the, the circle. Now, what I didn't share with you earlier, the, the color has changed. Originally, it was a blue. Now, it's the geometry here is black. And that means it's fully defined. Down below here, you can see fully defined. And also, if you hit, if I, you hit escape, there's a neat little measuring tool in here. There's measure up and evaluate. There's measure and there's mass properties. We can find out how much our part weighs. Um, or you could just click on any entity and down below here, it will tell you the length immediately or the diameter and locations and things. So it's kind of neat how they have that. Let's go to features. Now here's something inside SOLIDWORKS that might be a little different. Those of you who use other CAD systems, typically with an extrude, it's all in one. Uh, SOLIDWORKS does things a little different. They actually have an extruded cut to remove material. So if you're going to drill a hole like this, you want extruded cut. There is a hole tool or the hole wizard, as they call it, which has a whole variety of holes like counter bores, counter sinks, pipe taps and things like that with threads or cosmetic threads. We're not going to cover that today. We'll cover that in exercise four coming up in the fourth week. Anyhow, so we can see here, we're going to go ahead and extrude cut that. Now, sometimes by default, it wants to go blind depth. And if you set it to 0.5, thinking that, well, it's the thickness of that plate behind it is 0.5. So if we set it to 0.5, it will come out to where it's a through hole. There's something called design intent. Design intent it, it crosses over all CAD platforms. And it's your, especially with parametric modelers like this, where you have the ability to change things and history based things. Um, <clears throat> if someone goes back and changes this thickness of this plate and you had that hole at 0.5, they're not only going to have to change the thickness of the plate, they're going to have to make sure that the hole goes through and change that. That's extra work. Or they might even forget, which is worse, or not realize it's no longer a through hole and it goes into production and it just costs a lot of money. So to avoid that, design intent is like to think ahead, like, you know what, that's always going to be a through hole and change does occur a lot inside design, almost always. So here's what you could do. Choose instead of blind, there's an option called through all, which will ensure it will always go through all. And so hit the green check. You don't have to think about that too much in my class. Actually, I encourage you not to think too much about it because it slows students down. And it's what I've observed over the years. Just learn how to model, but keep that in the back of the mind as you become more fluid with this software, fluent with it. Uh, that's something to think about. And it's a courtesy too for other people or designers who might end up working on your design to make it easy for them to modify. All right, go ahead and click anywhere and you can see the hole. You could also see the characteristics of the geometry, especially if you have a, car, a graphics card that supports it. It looks kind of like aluminum because we have it set to aluminum. In fact, now we could go to evaluate, go to the scale here, mass properties, and find out how much this weighs. And over here we could see it's almost a pound of aluminum. So it's 0.93 pounds. All right, and you also have other uh, amounts of data there, but now we know how much that weighs. All right. So let's, this is those of you who are taking my class, this is all we do for exercise one. If you want to learn how to be like a, make a fantastic portfolio and add some colors and just an additional five to 10 minutes of your time, you might want to watch this next five minutes or 10 minutes that it depends on how far I go for photo rendering, as well as sculpting the shape and making it look phenomenal for a portfolio. Otherwise fast forward or uh, just end at this point. Uh, Cause I will eventually in this video go through the labs too. 
All right, so let's go and add some additional features. So go to the Features tab. Now these are typically reserved for like next week or the week after, but I'm gonna show you some. The Fillet Tool, it's a really neat tool. It's, it puts a radius. It's almost like if you took a file and filed down an edge to make it nice and rounded. Okay, it actually is that. Now over here on the left, you have the parameters. Set it to one or one inch and go ahead and select this edge right here and you'll see the preview. You could change it right here if you like or go ahead and select this edge too and hit the green check. So very easily and quickly, we just gave it a little bit of a sculpted shape. Looks a lot more impressive than basic block. Let's go and add something else. Hit the little arrow underneath fillet and you'll find chamfer. Now chamfer is an angle. Chamfers have a tendency to cast more of a greater shadow than just an ordinary fillet or radius as you saw earlier. So for industrial design, it could be useful or actually for all sorts of things. Um, but anyhow, let's set it to 0.125 at 45 degrees. And oh, by the way, if you didn't see the preview, you have to turn on full preview. My apologies. That was on the fillet too. And I, I didn't show that to you because I already had it on. So um, make sure on both of these, you can turn on full preview if you did not get that preview. Okay, so go ahead and select the edge. And this is what the preview looks like. Go ahead and select this edge over here. You could even put one on the edge of a hole if you wanted to make a countersink, but I'm not gonna put it on there. So go ahead and hit the green check. And now you could actually see we've added some chamfers. And now the part is looking a bit more impressive than it did, especially for your first part. Now, does anyone remember how to rotate with the mouse? Move your pointer to the center, hold, push down the wheel hold it down, move your mouse to the left until you get this view where we can actually see the backside and we can actually see these faces and feel free to do it a couple times if you want to rotate to get it the way you'd like it. Um, if it's a little too dark, you could turn off real view if, if that's bothering you. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add something to this. We're going to shell it out. So remember it was 0.9, almost a full pound. Well, Let's now, after we've uh, put the fillets in and such, let's shell it to make it a thin walled part. Go to shell and we'll leave it at the default of 0.1 just for the sake of easiness. Select this face. Go ahead and select this face too and that face. Whatever face you select is going to be removed. It'll be opened up. Go ahead and hit the green check. And now take a look. We've made a thin walled part. Now we're dabbling in a much more complex part, much more impressive part for your first day. So again, a great little thing for your portfolio. Let's take a look under evaluate and go to the mass properties. And now look at how much we light, lighten this. Instead of 0.91, it's actually 0.19 now. So um, that's another very useful feature for mass pro the mass properties there. Okay, go ahead and rotate this or hit your space bar and go to isometric and control seven actually will get you to that. Um, if we don't have to save just yet, don't worry about it. We should be in a safe uh, thing. Now, here's the thing. If you ever hit the X key and you get this little funnel, that funnel is a selection filter. It only selects faces at this point. If you try to select an edge, you can't. So just be aware that might happen if you're playing with those F keys. So be careful because some of those F keys are for the selection filter. You could hit X to turn that off. Okay, but sometimes I have students selecting some of those other F keys. The other area, you could bring that up. If you right click on any of these um, tabs, you could actually go to customize. And here you could enlarge your icon size. Okay, make them a bit bigger or bring them back to the original size. You could go to the uh, shortcut keys and you can make fast keys for all the different tools. Uh, you could go to commands and I wanna actually go to toolbars. And what I was looking for was the selection filter. Now, if you activate selection filter, it shows up uh, like mine showed up way up here. And essentially this, See, some of these are actually the fast keys, I believe are some of the F keys. And so you might have to turn off that selection filter, but just go ahead and hit the X. All right, I'm probably going a bit deeper than you need to, but I know when I show that sometimes students get stuck. All right, 
So anyhow, now that we have this, let's change some colors and let's make it look more realistic. First of all, up here, you can hit the little arrow and you can turn on perspective. Perspective adds a vanishing point. Those who are in art or photography notice it right away. Not everybody notices it. Engineers don't typically notice it without uh, some experience to it. But that's a very critical setting if you want to make it look somewhat real. Okay, so now over what you can do is uh, this already has the aluminum characteristics. Actually, if I go back to real view, which you might ha not have real view, it depends on your graphics card. So you'll just have to leave it with the other thing if that's the case. But <clears throat> anyhow, so I'm gonna turn it on. You can see it adds some nice little reflections and things like that. But we could go ahead and click, like let's say we click on this chamfer. And over here, we get the quick launch. And if you hit the little arrow next to this beach ball with the pencil, and slowly move down, you could have it just apply to that individual face, a color, I should say. You could have the whole chamfer feature or the entire body, or this is the whole part. So we just want the chamfer one, so select that. And over here on the left, we could select a different color from the color options and just, you could pick them individually here or here, or you could go even further and over on the right, you'll see if you hit the beach ball here, you'll have appearances. And this is what it looks like at first when you hit it. Uh, you might have to hit this little arrow. And then you could see there's plastic, metal, paint, and rubber, glass. You could Let's go with um, painted. And there we have car. Um, and you could go with anything you like, actually. Uh, have fun with this. I encourage you to have fun. Pick, any, pick the textures or whatever. Experiment. You see, watch that. I clicked on gloss blue. I hit the green check. And now it's applied that. Now, again, those of you who don't have a, a card that supports that, this is what it's going to look like, which is fine. Which, and some, some of my students and people in industry don't even like the real view. I, I like it. It's pretty nice. That's why I've always gotten professional graphics cards. All right. So with that being said, now we could go ahead and we could save this. Now, those of you who are in my class, I'm going to have you save this. Oh, let's do one more thing. Go ahead and click on this surface, go to the beach ball, and select the cut extrude. And I'm going to actually select a metal. I'm going to go with brass and polished brass, just for fun. Okay, now we could go ahead and we're going to save this as a PDF because you are going to submit a PDF. Those of you who are taking my class in D2L or Blackboard, basically, I just need a PDF. So get yourself into an isometric view, similar to what I have. Don't just give me like a front view. I can't always see everything with that type of view. You want to rotate it a little bit like this. And I'm not critical about it. Just I just need to be able to see some of the details. But now we could go to File, and you could go to Print, or you could actually could go to Save As. And right here, you click on the filter and you'll see all the different options. You're looking for Adobe Portable Document Format, or PDF. And then we just go ahead and call that E1 for Exercise 1, and hit Save. And then from here, we could go ahead and you could submit that in Blackboard or D2L. Now, there's another option. If it doesn't bring over the actual colors and things like that, or if you're doing analysis, because the analysis doesn't carry over in the image typically. Here's another trick. You could go to print and then select the Microsoft print to PDF and hit OK. And you could save a PDF from there that actually does capture the characteristics that you've added to the actual view. And I in this video, I'm not going to do the actual labs like I said I was going to. So this concludes this exercise. For those of you taking my class, scroll down on the assignments area and you'll see the labs, labs 1 and 1B, and you'll be able to complete those.